Oh, this thing is ridiculous. Oh. <laughs> So we finally got bump stops installed on this project. Now I made it to where when the bump stops bottom out all the way on the axle thing that we made, the shocks still have about an inch of travel left before the actual shocks bottom out because when this is when the frame slams down on the suspension, the bump stops are designed to compress a little bit and we don't want the shocks to bottom out when the uh, bump stops are compressing. So I know you guys were saying two inches of travel left on the shocks, but two inches is too much. One inch is just fine. For this project, this thing's not that heavy. So now I'm super curious to see how much flex the suspension has on this project, because remember, these shocks have about, have about 14 inches of suspension travel. So in theory, this thing should have a lot of suspension flex and movement and all that kind of stuff. And I'm curious to see how much we actually have because I did buy a nitrogen bottle and a nitrogen regulator to put nitrogen back into these shocks to test out the suspension. But before we can do that, I want to add a bunch more tubing to the frame to kind of strengthen this thing up a little bit more because I don't want to, because remember, this thing is still only tacked together just by a single tack everywhere. Uh, and I don't want this thing falling apart as we're flexing the frame and testing the suspension. So let's add a bunch more cross bracing throughout here, some in between here, just to kind of strengthen the frame up a little bit more so therefore we can test the suspension.
Alright, so there's definitely not all the cross bracing I want to add to the frame. There's definitely going to be a little bit more in the back, more on top, obviously, and a little bit more in the front, but I think it's good enough for now to where this frame will hold up to testing suspension, flexing this thing back and forth without falling apart. Now, like I said, I bought a nitrogen bottle and a nitrogen regulator. The, the bottle I bought locally at my local air gas, same place I get my, nitrogen, or my uh, uh, argon tanks. And then the nitrogen regulator I bought on eBay. I'll put a link in the description below for this thing in case you guys want to find out how much it was and where I bought it. Now, instead of just filling these shocks up with enough nitrogen to pick the frame up uh, at ride heights, what I want to do first is I'm going to fill all the shocks up to where they fully extend because I'm really curious to see what this thing looks like with the suspension fully extended. I want to see what this thing looks like with the frame as, as high in the air as this thing can get. And uh, we'll just see what it looks like and then I'll let a little bit of nitrogen out to try and figure out the ride height of this thing then we can figure out uh, and test the suspension flex and all that kind of stuff just to purge all the air out of this thing I guess it's the tires. Huh. There it goes. <laughs> oh, this thing is ridiculous. That's at two hundred and 225, I think. Let's fill up the other one. Wow. <laughs> yeah, see, see why I wanted to strengthen the frame up a little bit before doing this? Oh, this thing is ridiculous. Holy crap. <laughs> what in the world is this thing? Oh, that's touching. Oh, crap. Okay, so unfortunately this tube right here is coming into contact with the shock, so let me cut it off and readjust it. Because right now it's not as, it's not fully extended, so let me... <laughs> oh, it's still going! Okay, that's the top. <laughs> what in the world? did I build? Why did I think I would need this much suspension travel? I'll be honest, when you're looking at numbers just online, it's hard to like try to picture if it, like, because when I was buying these shocks, I'm like 14 inches of travel, is that going to be enough? Yeah. Yeah, it, it, that's enough. That, that's plenty. We don't need any more. <laughs> this is actually, this thing's ridiculous. I, I, I'm not sure if this is a good thing or a bad thing. It's cool. Is it just, is it useful? Is it, do we need to have this much suspension travel? Okay, good news is the U-joints still actually turn with them being at that angle. So the U-joints and the drive shafts are going to work at that extreme angle. They may not be the smoothest, but it, it'll work. Can I get in this thing? <laughs> oh my, oh wow. Okay, this this thing just turned into something really cool. This, thing, this thing's a little hard to get into, I'll admit, and it just got really harder, so.
There we go. There we go. Let's hope nothing breaks and it doesn't come crashing down. This, this thing's amazing now. I wonder how scary it would be to drive it like this. Right, getting out is going to be a little difficult, so I'm just going to do this. There we go. There we go. This thing is ridiculous. So I've been thinking about it and I guess it's good that it has this much travel because obviously, obviously it's not gonna ride at this height but it has the capability of having this much travel with the suspension. It's just gonna ride a lot lower. And I've been looking at rock crawler videos and it seems like, yeah, they do have a lot of uh, suspension travel, whatever you call it, dropout or whatever, whatever it's called. This thing is just, it looks ridiculous right now. That's kind of why I'm just, I'm so shocked at this. It looks ridiculous. <laughs> this is why I wanted to test this. I wanted to be able to move the at the front axle side to side and test to make sure that the shock doesn't hit anything. And sure enough, when I pick up one side of the suspension, you can see right here that it hits the it hits the frame. Yeah, that uh, <laughs> that kind of sucks. Which means I guess we have to cut all this off, and that means we have to cut the bump stops off and redo the bump stops yet again or, or figure out a different way to I didn't really like the look of this because it kind of is repetitive there's already a, a you know a bend right here so this just kind of just looked a little I didn't ever like the look of it <sighs> yeah I, I guess we don't have any other choice let's just let's cut it off I guess Wonderful. Check this out. So here's the bump stop. Here's where the bump stop is supposed to sit on, but because it's tilted at an angle, this is now over here. So 
I, I swear, this whole bump stop thing, it's starting to become a nightmare. I just, I can't seem to get it to work. So I've been staring at this for like 20 minutes now, trying to figure out how do I, how do I fix this? How do I solve this? And because it doesn't make sense having bump stops if they don't come into contact with anything when the axle is tilting in one direction or the other. Doesn't make sense. That doesn't work. So we have to solve this to figure out how to get this to work. Also, another thing I'm noticing is this is really close to this where the bump stop mounts to and if the tire was still on I'm pretty sure if the tire is turned in this direction with the axle tilting like this it will come into contact with the frame this portion of the frame where the bump stop is attached to so that's another issue we have to uh, solve so I, I think I have an idea on how to solve this and basically instead of having the bump stop mounted to the frame we're going to have to turn it upside down and mount it to the axle and then just have a longer contact patch for the bump stop to come into contact with wherever the axle is. If it's straight up and down, it can still come into contact or if it's tilted to one side, it's going to move in closer. We just have to make the contact patch longer to accommodate for the tilting and moving of everything. So. And we can't, we can't really do that on the axle, but we can do that on the frame. That's why I'm moving the bump stop to the axle and then the elongated contact patch for the bump stop, we're gonna have to mount to the frame. So it just means that we have to redo everything yet again and also make sure that it, the, the tire can't come into contact with it when the, uh, if and when the tire is turned in one direction and, you know, tilting this much, so. Yeah, I, I swear this project is like one step forward, two steps back. But we're slowly getting there. We're slowly working out the bugs with this crazy suspension setup.
Now I'm definitely liking the new look of this. This looks a whole lot sleeker than the original look. All right, check it out. So when the suspension moves side to side, the bump stops contact through its entire range of motion side to side. So now unfortunately, when the axle is level like this, the bump stop is definitely not contacting head on with this support. It's definitely contacting at an angle, which I'll admit isn't the best, but <laughs> honestly, I am tired of having to move these around, so I'm gonna call it good enough. At least it works through its entire range of motion. It contacts through, you know, side to side movement, all that kind of stuff. It works, it's good enough. Let's move on with something else. Now, when I installed these drive shafts on the front and on the back suspension, you guys were saying that I'm gonna have to have telescoping drive shafts on this project. Now, let's actually test it. Right now, this is free floating on here. Let's tack this in place, move the suspension up and down, and see if this binds up at all. Look at that. Doesn't look like it's binding up. Now, if you look at this, there's actually a Zerk fitting on this. This is the telescoping portion of this drive shaft setup. This is not hard mounted to the output shaft of the gearbox. This is able to slide back and forth, three quarters of an inch in either direction to accommodate for any misalignment with the suspension. If you, if you actually look at it closely, you can see it moving in and out slightly when I move the suspension up and down. Just like that. The Zerk fitting is there, so therefore I can grease this so it doesn't have any binding up issues. So the drive shaft is free floating on the output of the gearbox, but it's hard mounted to the input of the differential. This little bolt right here holds it in place, so therefore it's not gonna slide in and out on this end. Now, this is definitely not permanent. I only tacked this in place just to demonstrate that it doesn't bind up or anything. I'll, I have to find a much longer piece of tubing and I'll weld the crap out of this to connect these two together. And I do know that you have to synchronize these U-joints together. Otherwise, it's gonna be a really inconsistent rotation with this end of the drive shaft if these U-joints are not in sync. So I do know that. Uh, I do have to look that up on exactly how to do it, but I'll do that once I'm ready to build the drive shafts for this project. So let's actually, uh, let's, re let's reassemble the front suspension so therefore we can continue working on something else. Alright, now the original plan was going to be, once I'm done with this video, I was going to put this thing to the side, pull out the CBR1000 project, and start stripping that thing for painting, but it's been raining pretty much every day this week, and I haven't had a chance yet to take that thing off-roading to test all the new modifications, so that's going to have to be the following week, and then next week, I guess, is going to be another video of this project. So next week is we got to do what we did to the front bump stops we have to do to the rear bump stops get them to work with the full articulation of the rear suspension as well as steering steering on this project is something i'm not looking forward to because it's going to be a really big challenge to get it to i'm doing a uh, rack and pinion on the front and then obviously and then 
normal steering wheel and then we're going to have to connect the two somehow using just normal steering linkage and get it to work with the suspension and all that kind of stuff. So that's going to be a bit of a challenge. So that is the next video of this project, but for now, I got to end this video here. Thank y'all for watching. I'll see ya in the next video.